What's going on guys, welcome back. This is the Panzer BP-12. I believe I'm saying that correctly, Panzer. It is a Turkish made semi-automatic bullpup shotgun. If you don't know what a bullpup is, it basically just means the chamber and the magazine well are behind the grip. So the barrel is still 18 inches long and totally legal, but the overall package is quite a bit shorter. It's a cool looking little shotgun. And one thing I just realized is you cannot flip the ejection port to the other side like you can on a lot of bull pups. And I'm a lefty, which means the shells are gonna eject right in my face. So today, I guess I'm a righty. I'll just go ahead and say, this is one of the cheapest bull pup semi-auto shotguns I have ever seen. There are some from Black Aces and other companies that are similar in price, but I've seen these for as low as $300 on sale. That is crazy for a semi-auto shotgun, especially a bullpup that looks this cool. I've also seen them for twice that price, so I guess it just depends where you go. Reviews are mixed at best, so I wanted to test this thing for you guys and see if a cheap Turkish-made bullpup semi-auto shotgun is worth it or if you should save and get something better. Let's go. All right, well, this gun has never been fired and we already have a problem. So I inserted an empty magazine just to get a feel for the thing and it got stuck like it was super glued in there. By the way, these are just five round mags, but I'll try it again and see if it happens on camera. Yep, it did it again. So I can't do anything here. The magazine release is stuck and the mag won't come out. If I pull the bolt back, same thing. I cannot press that magazine release. What I discovered is if you push in and simultaneously press the magazine release, then it will come out. It's a brand new gun, so maybe it's a break-in thing, but it did kind of lower my expectations right off the bat. But we'll go ahead and start with some low power birdshot. If this does not work, I won't hold it against the gun because it probably prefers more powerful ammo. But... Let's see. Malfunction. That shell won't. Nice. Still cannot release the magazine, so we'll push it in and pull it out that way. Not going to be doing any tactical reloads with this thing. It's working. One recommendation I have if you're gonna shoot one of these is to put your index finger in front of the hand stop. Otherwise, it beats the crap out of it. I hate shooting right-handed, but we gotta do it. Quick side rant, one reason why problems like the magazine release not working really piss me off is for the beginner. I can obviously diagnose problems with firearms. I have a lot of experience, but the newbie who buys this as their first home defense shotgun would probably not even know that it had a problem until God forbid they needed it to work. And it just irks me that companies put stuff out like this and I feel the need to share it with y'all. <laughs> Rant over. By the way, this is number six shot and it's going 1,250 feet per second. So it's not like a target load. It is a little more powerful than that. For a 12 gauge shotgun, this thing is very lightweight. So it does have a lot of recoil. It's working now, boys. Hey guys, while I have your attention, I want to take just a minute to tell you all about Shields, who is supporting the channel and making today's video possible. If you're into the same things I am and you have not been to Shields, you're really missing out. With over 30 locations and counting, Shields is basically a one-stop superstore for everything, outdoors, sports, exercise, fashion, you name it they probably have it. With all the premium brands like Loophole, Vortex, Sitka, and Mystery Ranch, just to name a few, you can be confident in every purchase knowing that you are getting the highest quality gear. And with the Shields guarantee, everything you buy, on sale or otherwise, is guaranteed satisfactory or your money back. And if you just so happen to find a better price on the same product elsewhere, Shields will match that price online or in store. So go check them out. There will be a link in the description box below. Tell them we sent you. And again, a big thank you to Shields for supporting the channel and sponsoring today's video. Let's try some double up buckshot. A little more recoil. <laughs> 12 gauge slugs.
<laughs> Let's put baseball sized holes in my metal trash can down there. <laughs> the magazine release is still not working, so I don't know what that's about, but kind of weird. And some full power bird shot. Put this one on the rubber dummy. Ran that too. Well, so far, this thing is surprising me. We had one malfunction on the very first mag with low power birdshot, so I can't really hold that against the gun. And obviously, I can only speak on this sample size of one. I'm reluctant to say it's a reliable shotgun because I saw so many negative reviews on the internet and people just complaining about all kinds of stuff. So it seems like it's a 50-50 gamble. You might get a good one, you might get a bad one. This seems to be a good one. So as most of you probably know, semi-automatic shotguns usually prefer a certain type of ammo, whether it's low power or high power, depends on the gun. This shotgun actually comes with two different pistons. One low velocity piston, which is in the gun when you buy it, and then in the box, they also have a high velocity piston. So depending on what ammo you're shooting, you can swap them out as needed. But I was reading the owner's manual last night and I noticed something kind of funny. So you probably won't be able to see this, but it says for anything over 1,350 feet per second, use the high velocity piston. But for the first 50 shots, you wanna shoot hot ammo with the low velocity piston to break it in. Makes sense. It then goes on to say, if you use high velocity ammo with the low velocity piston, it will increase wear and void the warranty. But if the gun will not cycle reliably with the high velocity piston, feel free to use the low velocity piston. I feel like they could have shortened that up and just said these guns are inconsistent and we don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right, really quick, I wanna go ahead and show you guys this shotgun up close. Like I said, the magazines are just five rounds. I think they do make bigger ones if you wanna buy them. Shotgun mags always look much higher capacity than they really are because shotgun shells are obviously humongous. So the first thing I noticed when I saw this gun was the finish. It's like a weird metallic black and gray tiger stripe or something. Definitely unique. I think it actually looks pretty cool. So up front, we have a fake suppressor that is obviously not real, a sling attachment underneath it, and an angled foregrip on the bottom, which I actually like on this shotgun. As long as you put your index finger in front of that hand stop, it works pretty well. If you don't, it will beat up your finger. Picatinny rails on the sides and the top, and then some cheap plastic flip up sights as well. Not sure what they are. Don't really care because I put red dots on pretty much every gun I get. Moving back, we have an ambidextrous safety and an ambidextrous magazine release. I think you can also swap the charging handle to whichever side you want. And I do not like how short the safety lever is. It's almost hard to actuate unless you're on it just right. The trigger is not bad for a cheap shotgun or an affordable shotgun, I should say. It's probably five or six pounds. No take up, no creep, you just start on the wall. The reset is very long and gritty. <laughs> and the break itself is long. But before the break, there's nothing at all. You just start on the wall, so not bad. Ejection port, magazine well, there's also a cheek riser on the butt stock. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's already too high for me, even at its lowest setting, so. I would probably never use it, I guess, unless you have a crazy big optic a rubber butt pad on the stock, thank God, and another sling attachment right there. If I flip it over, it's all pretty much exactly the same other than the bolt release right here, which is not ambidextrous. As far as the bullpup goes, I don't have too many complaints about the design other than you cannot swap the ejection to the other side. And I'm left-handed, which means I automatically have to shoot this gun right-handed. But other than that, I kind of like it. I think that's pretty much it. It is a piston-operated semi-automatic shotgun, and it's very lightweight, so it does kick kind of hard. I cannot speak to the durability or longevity of this gun because I've only had it for one day, obviously. I did see several people online saying that this piece cracked fairly early on, and it was a few people saying that, so something to think about. But so far, for us, it has ran surprisingly well. Let's try the Texas Star. Five plates and five rounds, so. Ah! Oh.
I win. Double lot buckshot versus watermelon. <laughs> you know it's a good watermelon explosion when you catch shrapnel all the way back here. How about a 12 gauge slug versus a can of chocolate pudding? This should be gross. <laughs> Even worse than I thought. I love shotgun slugs. Well, you gotta love it when you spend five grand on a high-speed camera and it fails during the gnarliest part of the video and does not capture the footage. What are you gonna do? Hopefully the other cameras captured it, but you can see on the ground how far that shotgun slug threw that chocolate pudding. It is all over the place. It's in a trail like someone ate Taco Bell and couldn't make it to the bathroom in time. And I even have some on my pants, so that's gross. And walking up to the crime scene, we have a lot more chocolate pudding splattered all over the ground. And here is our pudding can right there. I'm not gonna touch it. You can see the entrance hole on the other side, and then we're looking at the massive exit hole. And that slug just obliterated that pudding can. I guess it was worth the mess that I'm gonna have to clean up. Maybe not. All right, guys, that is the Panzer BP-12 semi-automatic bullpup shotgun. I'm not gonna lie, I came into this video expecting to have a bunch of problems with this thing, and it did kind of surprise me. We only had a couple issues, and that was very early on with low power ammo. So I'll go ahead and say this one does not suck, but it is kind of a finicky little thing with some weird quirks and you definitely get what you pay for. Again, there are a lot of negative reviews online about these and others aren't so bad. So maybe it's a quality control issue and you got a 50-50 shot of getting a good one. Just know that and buy at your own risk. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know down in the comments below and let me know what your experience has been with the Panzer BP-12. Also, merch store just opened up. Link will be in the description box below. And we just got the store added to the YouTube channel. So if you scroll down underneath the video, you can see pictures of everything that we have in stock. I worked hard on it. It's very high quality and I'm excited. So please go check that out. If you like the video, hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.